Hi there. Previously, we added a representer to the index action to nicely format our API response. But we didn't add a representer to the create action, which in the success case returns a book. So it would be nice to also add a representer here. We'll add a call to our representer. And we want to do something very similar to what we did in the index action, only we only want to represent a single book. So I'll create a book representer and we'll use it in the same way. So we'll initialize it with a book and we'll call as JSON. So then if I open up the books representer, we need to do something very similar for book. So I'm going to duplicate this file and rename it as books, uh, sorry, book representer. And then I can rename the class to book representer. And I'm going to rename all the references to books to book and then I will no longer be looping over books it will just be a single book so we're just taking the single book into the class and then we are um, returning this hash using the book throughout. Right now there is some duplication between the book representer and the books representer. And we could dry that up, but I think it would reduce the readability. So for now, let's leave them as separate files. I also think that over time they may diverge and it will make more sense to have them separated. Now, if I open the spec file for our book API endpoints, and I run the uh, post books test, which we've just uh, modified by adding a representer, you'll notice that the test still passes, which is uh, probably not what we want because we've changed the response body. And the reason for that is we're making an assertion on the books in the database that that changes from zero to one. We're making an assertion on the API response, but only the response status code. And we're making a response on the author count in the database but we're not making any assertions on the actual uh, response body itself. So let's go ahead and add that now. What we want to do is expect that the response body is equal to uh, some kind of hash, which will match the books representer. So let's Let's grab that. Now, the first thing is that these will be in, uh, these will be strings because they're being deserialized from JSON. So let's convert those. And let's also uh, paste in these values. So we'd expect the ID to be one, I'd imagine. The book title should be The Martian. I'm just looking here in the uh, test setup. The author name would be Andy Weir. And the age should be 48. And the other thing we need to do is this response body will be essentially a 
a big string. So what we need to do is convert it into, uh, we need to deserialize the string basically. So we can do uh, JSON pars. And that will convert the, the JSON string into an actual Ruby hash. So let's try that. And we have a failure. Ah, so that should be an integer, not a string. And there we go. There we have a passing test. And this has, this is actually making an assertion on the whole API response body. So now if we were to change anything in our serializer, um, sorry, in our representer, this test would fail. For example, if we remove the title field, this test would no longer pass. Now, if we look up here in the uh, index action, so calling get books, you'll notice that we have the same problem in that we're not making any assertions based on the response body. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to run the tests to make sure they are still passing. And it looks like we have a failure, which I believe is because the, the factories are now invalid because we changed the database structure so the author is no longer a string on book, it's now an associated record. So let's change that. I'm going to jump over to the book factory and I'm going to, ah, oh, so it looks like we already have an author which would have been auto-generated. I'm just going to delete these fields for now and I'll jump back to the spec. And so what we can do is I'll add a um, author, I'll say first author. So I'm just setting up a let here and inside I'll call factory bot and I'll say author and the author has a first Oops, first name, and I'll just take it from here. So the first name would be George, last name, and age, I believe, I'm gonna go with uh, six, 46. I'm sure that's wrong, but it's okay for now. And we have the second author. And I'm gonna go with the first name, not really a first name, but just for testing purposes. And age, let's say 78. So I have these two let variables now. And what I can do is, instead of the string value, I'll pass in those references and let's rerun the test there we go in fact while I'm here I'm going to run the whole test suite to see if there's any other failing tests with that same problem ah oh, yeah so we also have the same issue on line 44, so that's the delete test. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to use the first author, George Orwell. There we go. And it says undefined local variable or method first author. So that's because I've defined the lets inside this describe block here. So it's um, this variable is not in scope for this describe block. So what I can do is if I move those upper level into the, the top level describe,
then these let variables should now be available to every describe block inside inside here. So I'll rerun the tests and there we go. We have them all passing. Back to get books and we want to um, do something very similar to this. So in fact, I'm going to copy it as a starting point. And what I can even do is run this test now and see how it fails and compare. So you can see that the test is kind of working, but the um, the response body is obviously going to be different from the um, post books. So instead of having one, we have an array of authors, and then we have George Orwell and H.G. Wells. So I need to set up an array and move this object inside it and it should be so the title should be 1984 the name should be George Orwell and the age 46 and then I have another object here where the let me copy this now the ID is two, the age oops, is 78, the title is t The Time Machine, and the author is HG Wells. So hopefully now if I rerun it, There we go, we have a passing test. Now, one last thing we can do to tidy this up a little bit is you'll notice there's a lot of repetition with JSON pass response body. And that's something we're going to be using throughout this whole spec file and potentially for all the other request specs that we might add in the future. So what we can do is move this into a spec helper and uh, give it a name like past response body so that we can easily call it, um, you know, we can use it throughout this spec file. So what I'm going to do is add a new file and I'll call it request helper. And I'll define a module request helper and this will have a method response body response body if I've spelled that correctly and inside there we'll just do JSON pass response body then what we need to do is uh, include this and what we can do is inside the spec helper we can include a module for only certain uh, specs so I can say config so the config I'm using here is coming from this our spec configure block so you can see it passes in a config and I can say uh, config include request uh, request helper, which is the name of our um, module. Make sure I've spelled that correctly. Request helper. And then I can say um, I can specify a type. So this is um, a type of spec that it runs on. So in this case, I'll say request. So it means that this module will only be included for request spec files. And the way that works is in the um, request specs, at the top you can see that the type here is, here is specified. So any spec that has this type will have the 
request helper module included. And then we should be able to use the response body. So I can replace all instances of JSON parse response body with the response body method. And let's run the whole test file again. So it looks like I've made a mistake. Uh, uninitialized constant request helper. Let's have a look at the spec helper. So request helper here. It looks like the spelling's correct. Oh uh, yeah, the issue is I need to actually require it into this file. So I need to say require request helper so that the spec helper actually knows where to look for this class constant. And there we go. We have our passing tests. We have um, added some assertions for the response body and we've looked at how we can uh, refactor shared behavior between tests using spec helpers. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful and I'll see you in the next one.